we're going to review a little bit of the passing 6-4 that we talked about last time. We're going to spend a bit more time talking about the neighbor pedal 6-4, the cadential 6-4, and then we're going to analyze this example and see how 6-4 chords can be used in the context of a composition. So let's review. A passing 6-4 must have in the bass a scale, either going up, as in this example, or you could do the opposite. You could go like this. Have the scale go that way, where you'd have a 1 6, 5 6 4, 1 chord. So, again, what we're analyzing is how to write second inversion triads. Unlike a 1 chord, uh, or rather a root position triad or first inversion, where you can use fairly freely root position, first inversion, they'll function the same way. The second inversion triad, you have to treat very specifically. It's, you can't, it's not as flexible. So there's these three ways that you're allowed to treat them, and only these three. You treat them as if they're passing, so they, they, they allow you to elaborate a one chord. So you have a one chord, you're moving to one, six, six, and you, the, 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 the five, six, four here is just an elaboration of that. It's like extension, it's putting another chord for interest and variety. So having that either you're, pa either you're passing through the five, six, four on the scale going up, or you're passing through the five, six, four chord on your way down the scale. When you do the voice lead, you, you cannot make any leaps from the one chord into the five, six, four chord. The voice leading has to either be beat by common tone or by step. You may not leap. And the same is true when you go from the 5-6-4 to the 1-6 chord. You may not have any leaps in any voices. They must move by step or common tone. So if you have the scale going up, you're going to have another with the scale going down. I could put the scale going down here in the, in the alto instead. Or I could even put it in the tenor right here. It doesn't matter which voice it's in, but you need it. And it's, it's what's called a voice exchange. So the A here becomes the A, it is, gets exchanged to here, and the C here gets exchanged here. So it's a voice exchange. It's very effective musically. It sounds wonderful. That's what we're talking about. The other is that you have this tonic, so tonic, leading tone, tonic movement. And then the other is the common tone. And again, these can shift into different voices. But that's the passing 6-4. How does that differ from the neighbor or pedal 6-4? Well, here's what you would have. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Notice that it's not the 5 chord now. Now you have to use the 4 chord. And notice that the bass line is common tones. That it has to be there. So in a one chord, you, and again, we're here, we're in the key of A major for all of these examples. The one chord is A, and since it's a root position, we need two A's, so A, A, C sharp, E. Wherever we put this, and these again, it can be in different voices. This A could be the soprano, it could be in the alto, it could be the tenor. In this case, it's the alto, but it's going to stay the same. It's going to be a common tone as well. That's not parallel problems, anything. It's not parallel because it's not moving. It's just sustained. Now, what will happen is that the E will step up to the F sharp in this case, and the C will step up. So a four, six, a four chord is spelled D, F sharp, A. So we have our D here, our F sharp here, and we have two A's. You will see that in all cases, when you have a second inversion triad, you are doubling the fifth of the chord. And the fifth of the chord is in the bass, so you can say it in one of two ways. You could say, in a second inversion triad, double the fifth of the chord, or you can say, in a second inversion triad, double the bass. You're saying the same thing. So you need to have two A's. So you'll see D, F sharp, A, A. 
we have that. If we look here, this is an E major triad. And since this is in second version, we expect an E, sorry, right here, a G sharp, and two Bs. And that's exactly what we have. So we have to have that doubling. There's no options. Root position triads, there's no options. One exception being the six chord of a deceptive resolution. And in first inversion, you have lots of options. The exception for first inversion is if it's a diminished triad, it has to be double the base, a third of the chord. So we're starting, you now have need to keep track in your mind, right? So root position. Double root, which is the same thing as saying the base, except when you have a six chord that's that's preceded by five. In first inversion, you're going to double anything except leading tone, and then the other exception for diminished triads, you have to double the third, which is the same thing as saying the base. And then for second inversion, you're going to double the fifth of the chord, which is the same thing as saying the base. And there are no exceptions for second inversion. So this is what you want. Again, root position, you're going to double the root. The exception is the sixth chord when it's preceded by five. First version, you'll double anything except the leading tone. Another exception being in a diminished triad, you'll double the third of the chord, same thing as saying the bass. And in the second inversion triad, you will always double the fifth of the chord, which is the same thing as saying the bass. You can see that right here. And this next example, the cadential 6-4. This one is, is a bit different in that this one needs to fall on a metrically strong beat. Let me say that again. The 164 needs to fall on a metrically strong beat. So this would be beat 3 in this case. The others, your neighbor and your passing 64, almost always occur on a weak beat. Right? So. This is normally on a weak beat. This is normally on a weak beat. This is normally on a strong beat. So there's a metric component we're now introducing to this. So the rule is always the same. We're always going to be doubling the base. So if the chord here is A, C sharp, E, we need two E's. Let's put it. Our second E here. Let's put our C sharp here. That's how we would voice our 164 chord. The way it resolves, again, there's no leaping. It's always by step. So when we go to a 5 chord, we need E, E, G sharp, B. And notice how I write in my doubling so I don't forget this. Well, E, there's a common tone. I'm sorry. This is E's here. E here. E is a common tone. We got the G sharp in the melody. This C will step down to the B. That's the way the voice leading works. It's always two notes go down, two notes stay the same. And then simply how you get to that, let's say here we have A, E and A. And we go to a 2-6 chord, we have an option. Uh, on, let's see if we can do a, a nice scale. A, B, let's go to an F sharp. You would have something like that as your voice leading. And then you would resolve it. I would resolve it. Oh, not like that. Uh, I might go like this. With a triple group. Nice smooth voice leading would be an option. So, cadential 6 4, 1 6 4 and a 5. Has to be on a strong beat. Passing 6 4, 1 
five six four one six or one six five six four one. Pedal one four six four one. Those are your three different types. Let's take a closer look and see how they are used in an example. This example starts with an E minor triad, ends with a B major triad. That says to me that it is not the key of G major, it is the key of E minor. E, G, B, that is a one chord. A, E, A, C, that is a four chord. B, E, G, B, this is our one, six, four chord. And then A, I'm sorry, C, E, F sharp, A. Now that bears a little explanation, right? Because you're not. We've got, let me write it down again, C, E, F sharp, A. I'm leaving out the grace note. Grace, note is our, grace notes are not usually part of your analysis. If I look at this, I say, well, there's four different pitches. Is this a seventh chord? Perhaps. What would be the root if it were? Well, F sharp is the only one you can stack thirds on, F, A, C, E. So F sharp would be a two chord. That would mean this is a two half diminished. So two half diminished, and it's in second inversion, four three. Well, that doesn't make sense. How, what kind of six four chord is that? It doesn't connect two of the same chord, but how does the bass move? The bass moves up a scale. The only thing close to that is our passing 6-4, and that's what this is. This is an example of a passing 6-4. It can occur in different places other than connecting 1 to 1-6. One in this case, it's connecting 4 and 2 half diminished 4-3. If you remember the chart of harmonic progression, 4 and 2 belong to the same box. They function as um, like a predominant. So these are related chords, and it has that same scale type movement. And look, we got common tone, common tone, common tone. We got these moving in scale. So there's no leaps, like we said also. So this works. This is a place where you can have a passing 6-4. This entire measure is the 2 halves diminished 4-3. This G here, and, and this is where things get a little complicated, it's not part of the chord. There's no chord that that makes sense to be in. So you could circle it and just call, label it NCT, non-chord tone. Our next chord that we would recognize, B, D sharp, F sharp, B, that would be our five chord. We go back to our one chord, one six. Here, A, E, A, D. That is not a chord that, that makes sense to us, right? A, E, A, D. That is not a triad, that is not a seventh chord. What do you do with it? Well, look forward. We've got a C coming next. So if that D was a C, could we make sense of the chord? If this D was a C? Yeah, it would be an A minor triad, which would be a four chord. That makes a ton of sense. So here again, that D is a non-chord tone, just like that G was over here. So we sometimes we need to analyze things by looking and saying, well, that doesn't make sense. Does something come up that makes it make sense that we could just ignore and count one of them as a non-chord tone? Here, we get to our 164. We get to, uh, this is going to be our 2 half diminished 4-3 again. The difference is that this is a non-chord tone. It's the same thing we saw here with just the grace note now becoming an eighth note. Same thing, ending in five. So in both cases, the one six four is treated as a passing six four. That's the type. The only thing making this analysis a bit of a challenge is that you do have non-core tones in there. And that becomes, becomes an issue because typically in music theory, we introduce you to analyzing things that are more advanced than what you're currently writing. So you're not authorized to write non-chord tones yet, but you're going to be asked to analyze them. And this is this is that example. And we'll talk more about non-chord tones, and once we talk about them more completely, it will be a lot easier for you to analyze.
Thank you.